Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Weston HDX Grill Guard on a 2020 Ford F-250 Super Duty. Now it's available in two different colors. Here we have our black powder coat finish, looks really good, but there's also a polished stainless version. So depending on kind of the look you're going for on your truck, you can pick between those two colors. Now this is custom fit to the Ford F-250 that we have, and you can see it does contour to the lights, so it gives it a really nice look, and also you're gonna get the most out of your lighting functions without blocking it. It's also designed to really guard a bunch of the front here, so with this mesh here, any big rocks or chips like that are gonna not damage your radiator or any part of your front grill. This is gonna prevent your headlights from getting smashed and any kind of impact. And so you can use this for off-road, a great brush guard. So if you are on those trails, this is gonna prevent any tree branches from hitting it. And also living in rural Missouri, deer is a very big thing. You can come around a corner and a deer can total your vehicle out pretty quick. I'm here to tell you this is very solid. In fact, it's mounted in four different spots to the frame and it uses some of the factory hardware on the tow hooks as well as bolting into the underside of the frame there. So it, it is extremely solid. Uh, there's no wiggle to it and it makes for a really easy bolt-in installation. Now the entire grill guard, except for the brackets that we come down here that bolt to where your tow hooks are, and as well as uh, underneath here to your frame, this is all one piece. So this is extremely solid and your brackets will go directly to your frame, which is really nice. And it also makes for pretty easy bolt-on installation with the only cutting that's necessary here is on your air dam for your bracket to come through. But other than that, it's super easy. Now I will say you're not gonna be able to retain the plastic shroud that goes on your tow hooks, but honestly with something like this, you're really not gonna notice those being gone as it does give it a pretty heavy duty look. Now the mesh is also nice because it's gonna prevent any large stuff from hitting your grill as I mentioned before, but also you're still gonna get airflow. You don't have to worry about your truck overheating and you have these integrated bars here, so they're mounted up to that, so it's gonna be nice and secure. It's not gonna be rattling around. Now overall, the installation is actually pretty easy. It's gonna take maybe one to two hours, give or take. Um, you are gonna probably want an extra set of hands, mostly because this is one piece, and it's not super heavy, but it's also kind of cumbersome to be able to put this up and bolt it into your bracket. So speaking of that installation, we're gonna take a look at that now. So follow along and we'll get your grill guard installed. Now to begin our installation, we're gonna go ahead and get the shrouds that are around our factory tow hooks off and they just kind of snap into place. So I'm gonna use a plastic trim tool. You can use a flathead screwdriver and you're gonna to wanna to just kind of pry this out so we can get, get it to pop off. There's just gonna be clips along here. So I'm gonna just kind of work my way around the edge. And then it, once we get a little bit further over here, it should be a little bit easier. There are some clips that put it into this center portion. So we're gonna to have to pop those out. Now I was able to get this far. There is gonna be a slot here. Where you're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and you're gonna to wanna to kind of wedge that and push this tab down. And that's gonna allow this to separate. So put a little bit of pressure here while pushing in the tab. It's gonna be kind of hard to see cause it's tucked behind there, but uh, you can see it once we get this popped off. There's probably one on the bottom here too. And those are the tabs there. So I was just pressing on this to get those out. So now that we have one side off, we'll go ahead and do the same on the other. Now we're going to start on our driver's side and you're going to want to grab your bracket that looks like this. So this is simply going to use this factory hardware here to bolt this in place. So we'll go ahead and get these removed and we're not going to want to tighten these down all the way. We're going to leave them loosely installed so that way we still have a little bit of adjustment. So get these knocked out using an 18 millimeter socket. Now, once you remove these, there is gonna be a nut plate that falls down, and uh, if it goes to the back, that's fine. We'll be able to grab it later. So we'll just go ahead, we're gonna get this in place, and it's got these little uh, metal washers here that'll at least bite into. So again, we're just gonna hand tighten these in place for now, and we'll remember to get that nut plate here. So with these kind of hand tightened in place, I'm gonna go ahead and get that nut plate and just kind of get those threads started. So ours kind of fell back here. So this is what that nut plate looks like. So go ahead, get that. And this is gonna bolt up this side going towards the tow hooks and the nuts facing towards the rear of the vehicle. So I'm gonna hold this in place and just kind of hand thread those bolts that we just took out just to where it's gonna hold it in place. 
Now our passenger side is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a mounting point on the top one and then we'll be using these two. But as we kind of put this in place, we can see that our tab is going to be in the way. So we're going to go ahead and bend this back. So I'm going to try a set of channel locks here, see if we can't get this just pushed back. And if you can't get that bent back to where it's flush and be able to get that bracket in, you can always cut it off as well. So on our passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and remove all four bolts, even though our bracket only requires three of them for mounting. And that's because we're gonna get those factory nut plates off and we're gonna be using the hardware that's in the kit to actually replace those nut plates. So we'll go ahead and get all these off. Now we'll go ahead and get this in place. Now it's only going to be, it's using three of the mounting holes here. So we're going to pass these bolts in. And then on the back side, we'll be using, again, our hardware that's supplied in the kit. And we'll be able to get these in place. But these washers will allow you to at least thread this in to kind of hold it in. That way you can at least have it in place and your bolts pass through and able to get the rest of the hardware on the back side. So now we're just going to be using our flat washer and a lock washer, followed by our nut. You may have to push on the bolt here. That washer should kind of hold in place, but just going to get that started. And again, we're going to leave these loosely threaded on. So we'll go ahead and make sure we get the hardware on all four of our bolts. Next, we're going to need to remove our factory bracket here, and there's going to be a nut plate here as well. And those can fall into the frame rail, and if that happens, that's okay. Um, but we'll go ahead and get these taken off. There's also two on the other side that'll allow this to come down. Also, there's a nut plate there. And we're doing this because we are going to be reusing the factory nut plate. This is where our next support is going to bolt up to. Um, but as far as this bracket, we will not be using that. So once you get these off, this nut plate is going to have to slide out, but I can reach my hand in the frame rail and so I'm going to, I can actually set my nut plate here. It's able to be pushed back in as well, but in order for the bracket to drop out, we're going to have to move this nut plate. So we got our bracket taken off. We have our nut plates here. And again, these are going to be fairly easy to put back in place, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, but we are going to be using these to mount up our next bracket, so just make sure they stay uh, within reach because we'll be reusing those. Now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now our next lower bracket is going to be bolting on this side only. So I am gonna go ahead and get one of our nut plates in, in the spot. Now, again, I can kind of feed this with my hands. It's not gonna to be too bad. So just get your studs passed through. And then there's actually this plastic retainer. Uh, you can go ahead and just kind of thread this on and this is gonna just allow our nut plate to stay in place and not fall back into the frame. Now, as far as the other one, um, we can actually go ahead and remove that. We're not gonna need that anymore, so we can set this aside. Now we can reinstall our nut plate here, and this is gonna go on the outside, and that's where our lower bracket is going to go out of this front air dam and bolt up to our brush guard there. So, so you can go ahead and just feed these up into the holes now it can get a little bit tricky and it can fall in the frame rail, but with a little finesse, you got a little bit of room here to be able to feed those up. And then once you have it pushed through, it comes with this plastic spacer um, that's just gonna slide on here and that's gonna allow this to at least hold it in place so it doesn't fall back in when you're putting your bracket on. So go ahead and do that on the other side as well. So now we're gonna need to go ahead and get our spot marked of where we're gonna trim it. And I think the best way to do that is Hold this against the frame flat, and that's gonna give us at least the plane of where this is gonna be. So you can actually hold it like this, and that's gonna align right about where we need it to be. So we'll go ahead and get a paint marker, mark this out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and also mark the width of this, and that way we know how much to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this marked out, and show you how it looks. Now you can also refer to your instruction manual for the measurements. I prefer this because once you actually have this in place, you'll know exactly where it's gonna be. And I think that's just a better way overall than trusting some measurements. But again, if you need to use those as reference, by all means, go ahead and do that. And 
And then I'm gonna go back with my file and just clean this up a little bit. So now with both sides cut out, we can go ahead and install our bracket. So we'll just kind of slide this in, put our studs through here, and then use our factory nuts here to just get this hand tightened in place. So now we're gonna get ready to put our grill guard on. So you're gonna to wanna to grab an extra set of hands to be able to put this up. And we're gonna loosely mount our hardware on for now. So I'm gonna to try to get at least a point down here and then one up here as well. Once we have uh, both sides loosely secured, we can go ahead and get the rest of the hardware on. But we're gonna to want to have our bolts handy with our cup washer. And this is gonna face in towards the center of the vehicle. And then we're gonna use our serrated flange nuts here to tighten those up. So again, we're just gonna kind of loosely mount it up and get these hand tightened on. That way it's secure and we can get the rest of it on afterwards. So, so with our assistance, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna lift this up in place and I'm gonna just pass my hardware through again, just so it kind of holds it in. And with that one there, I'm just gonna loosely thread this on so this side's at least supported. That way we can get the other side started. So with our top ones in place, we can go ahead and get these fed in. So we're gonna need to kind of move this around a little bit to get them aligned. But once we get one in, it's gonna make it a lot easier. Now with all of our hardware in place, you can see it definitely has some adjustability here. So you can kind of custom cater exactly how you want it, if you want it tighter against the hood. But you can see it kind of contours against the headlights here. So I'm gonna to try to align this properly and then we'll go ahead and get everything tightened down. And then we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and get these torqued properly. So while tightening it down, just kind of go one side and then the other and make sure that you're happy each time you tighten it and then move along as necessary. So I went ahead and tightened down all my factory bolts. So now I'm gonna use the included Allen key to put on our bolt here. And using an 18 millimeter socket, I'm gonna go ahead and get these tightened down, or the brush bar down on the bracket. So now I'm gonna go back to all of our M12 hardware and I'm gonna keep my Allen key in place. And then using a torque wrench here and the torque settings in the instruction manual, I'm gonna go ahead and get these torqued down. Now, if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at eTrail. You can rent, generally rent them at an auto parts store. This is gonna make sure that it's gonna stay tight for the lifespan, but also not be too tight, causing stress on the threads. Now this one is gonna be a little bit more tricky because we have our tow hook here. And normally I like to torque it on the nut side. So two different ways you can do this. I'm gonna be using a crow's foot here. Uh, if you don't have a crow's foot in an 18, you might have a bit that's going to be the same size as this Allen here. You could use that um, while holding a wrench on this side. So whatever works best for you. Again, sorry, it's a kind of a tricky spot here, but we'll get this torqued down. So now we'll go through and torque the remaining hardware and that should do it for the installation. And that was a look and installation of the Weston HDX grill guard on a 2020 Ford F-250 Super Duty.